The term psychopath gets thrown around all willy-nilly, especially when Onision's name comes up. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing how it's a little bit more complex than that and ask the question, what if Onision took the psychopath test? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community, try to see what we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And make sure you're following me over on Instagram and Twitter over at The Rewired Soul. So in this video, as we do with all of our videos, 20% of the ad revenue, granted YouTube actually monetizes the video, will be going towards a charity. All right, so this video, we will be donating to the organization Rain. I will also provide a link down in the description and in the pinned comment if you would like to donate to them directly. But anyways, share the video so we can donate some money to Rain, their phenomenal organization. All right, so yeah, anyways, real quick, before I jump and dive deep into this topic, quick disclaimer for those of you who don't know me. All right, I am not a licensed therapist or a psychologist, and even if I was, I could not diagnose Onision, all right? But like I said, like a lot of people, you know, it's not just with Onision, like one of our first instincts to label somebody is, that we don't like is you're a, you're a narcissist or a psychopath or a sociopath or whatever it is, right? And like I said in the intro, I wanna talk about how it's a little bit more complex than that. So. In this video, I'm gonna be referencing two books, fantastic books. One of them is The Psychopath Test by John Ronson. The other one is a book I just started today. Probably gonna finish it today too. It's called The Science of Evil by Simon Baron Cohen. Excellent, excellent book. If you're into that stuff, like, oh my God, they dive into so many cool things. So anyways, if you like these topics, like make sure you check the description, I'll link you the books down below. All right, so anyways, Onision, no, stranger to controversy, like where do you start? Well, I guess where you could start, if you don't know, which you probably do, like go watch Repsion's video, The Onision Files, it's like an hour long, it kind of goes through all of them, right? And when we look at this, we ask ourselves like, is somebody like Onision a psychopath, all right? So how do you test? How do you test for someone being a psychopath. Now, one of the issues with a lot of mental health tests is that they're self-reporting. So one of the most popular tests for psychopathy is called the PCLR test, all right? And here's the thing, when it comes to self-reporting, a lot of people fake, you know, um, especially when it comes to like psychopaths, like they learn the the facial expressions and emotions of other people because their brain isn't operating properly, right? So they will say what they think is the norm to say. So that's one of the issues when we look at something like the PCLR test. Now, another one of the issues when it comes to these, these tests and these checklists, like is somebody a psychopath? Like go check out the Rosenhan exper uh, experiment. This is absolutely hilarious. Like he is the most gangster psychologist I've ever heard of in my life. So basically he kind of wanted to find out like how good are psych hospitals at actually knowing if a person has a mental illness, right? So what he did was he had a bunch of guys go fake mental illness, get admitted to this psych hospital and then see how easy it was to get out. Like, yo, I faked my way in here, I faked all of my symptoms, and like the hospital didn't let any of these people go. So when Rosenhan released the findings of this experiment, he's like, clearly there. this is a little bit more subjective, you know, if they can't even tell when a person is faking it. So these psych wards, they're like, oh, okay, okay, Rosenhan, you think you know what you're doing? All right, let's do this. Send people in again and we guarantee we'll be able to tell who is faking it, right? So over the next month, they counted, I think it was like 40 people, some somewhere around the ballpark of 40, that they figured out were faking it and part of this Rosenhan experiment. But psych, Rosenhan never sent in a second group of people. Like, think about that for a second. Like, I don't know about you, but one of my biggest fears is getting wrongly locked up in a psych ward and nobody believing that I'm sane. And then like, when you look at the Rosenhan experiment, like, just think about that for a second. So, 
another one of the tests um, that they talk about when it comes to psychopath, you know, um, and this is something that would still be difficult even if Onision took it, is something called the BIS scale, all right? And the BIS is also in conjunction with the BAS scale, and it says this, I'll link this down below. The BIS slash BAS scale is a 24 item self-report questionnaire designed to measure two motivational symptoms. The behavioral inhibition systems, BIS, which corresponds to motivation to avoid aversive outcomes, and the behavioral activation system, BAS, which corresponds to motivation to approach goal-oriented outcomes. Participants respond to each item using a four-point Likert scale. One, very true for me. Two, somewhat true for me. Three, somewhat false for me. Four, very false for me. The true scale has four subscales that were derived via factor analysis. One subscale corresponds to the BIS. Seven items contribute to this score. For example, criticisms or scolding hurts me quite a bit. The remaining three subscales correspond to the three components of BAS. So anyways, what is this saying? So people who are diagnosed as psychopaths, they rate really low on the BIS scale, all right? What that means is they are not afraid of the consequences, right? So they keep doing things and they're not afraid of going back to prison. That is why some people are repeat offenders, right? I think a lot of people are re, uh, repeat offenders because the rehabilitation aspect of prison sucks, but psychopaths rate lower on that BIS scale. So when you're looking at somebody like Onision, is the PCLR or even the BIS scale even a good determinant, right? Like I want you to look throughout Onision's history. Would you say that he's not afraid of any consequences, right? Like he clearly has fears when it comes to, you know, uh, legal issues, right? Um, the stuff that went on with the Badlands and all that. He has a very, uh, I don't know, interesting moral code when it comes to laws such as like, don't smoke weed and everything like that. But think about that for a second. If Onision was a true psychopath, would he have any fear of consequences. So what's the solution? How do you test anybody for psychopathy? All right, so this is, this is kind of interesting. So like ethically when speaking about it, the person would have to agree to it, almost like a lie detector test. All right, so someone like Onision, if I was Onision, here's what I would do. If I was Onision, I would figure out a way, save up the money and do this test instead. All right, so one of the tests they did was based on the fear response. They did this with SCR, which is skin conductive responses. So basically what they would do, they took you know a control group and then they took a group of psychopaths and they tested the skin conductive responses because your skin actually is a giveaway if you're scared and things like that. It's kind of the reason why lie detectors work, right? So anyways, that's one of the many things they test with lie detectors. But anyways, what they did was they would play a noise and shock somebody, play a noise, shock somebody. So they were conditioning the person, when this noise comes on, you're gonna get shocked. Well, in the average person, the amygdala would, it would go off and say, yo, be afraid of that sound because you's about to get shocked. When they did this with psychopaths, there was very, very little conductivity. Psychopaths weren't nearly as scared. They did this same test, just like playing loud noises sporadically and everything like that. And on each one, the, the SCR was very low for psychopaths. So what am I getting at? When it comes to Onision, whether you like him or hate him, a lot of people are the latter, but the thing is, it's like, like I said, calling someone a psychopath or a sociopath is much more complex. And it's interesting because, you know, I think back to Shane Dawson's series about, you know, Jake Paul and people were so upset with him, you know, about to slap a label on somebody and all this misinformation. But like, look in the comment section of any controversial video on, on YouTube, right? Look at comments on Instagram or on Twitter. Like the majority of the public has no problem labeling people as sociopaths, psychopaths, narcissists and stuff. And that's why I love books like this. I love learning more about the complexities of this thing and how it's actually studied. What we find out is that there's actually um, 
a, a, a range, right? So something that the author of this book, Simon Baron Cohen and another uh, scientist came up with is something called the empathy quotient, right? And it's a scale of, I, I believe it was one to six, how much empathy a person has. So even this, though this book is called The Science of Evil, what they're really measuring is a person's level of empathy, right? So uh, at level one, it's like pretty much no empathy. Level six is like somebody who's extremely empathic. But like when I was reading this book and I was thinking about just like people I know or people I observe and everything like that, I would think that most people rate about a four or a five, all right? But anyways, like I think when we look at people, even people that we don't like, and man, I could do a whole nother video on this. When we look at people that we don't like, we need to look at this stuff as a big gray area rather than you're just either this or that, right? A lot of people are on this spectrum. But the other thing that I've been thinking about a lot too is, you know, some of you who've been following my channel, you know I've been diving really deep into moral philosophy. So there are some people who are very empathetic, but based on their moral compass, it depends on who they are empathetic towards, right? Here's a great example. Um, you may find people who are animal activists. They are more empathetic towards creatures than humans, but you wouldn't call that person not empathetic. They're just more empathetic and less empathetic towards certain populations. You see what I mean? This stuff is layered, baby. This stuff is layered and I'm glad you're going on this journey with me. All right? But anyways, like I said, please share this video. 20% uh, of the proceeds will be going towards the organization Rain. And if you want to check out either of the books that I mentioned, The Science of Evil or The Psychopath Test, check out the description down below as well. All right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon, and a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel by buying my books, the merch, and all that stuff. You're all amazing. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.